Hi everyone! My name is Janalu Javier Paladin. So for today, we were going to discuss the topic that is given to us in cooperation with Mr. Benedict Kanke and Mr. John Stritch Bernardo. The ICT in the computers and the roles and history. So what comes to our mind first when we hear computers or ICT? Intended learning outcome. At the end of this chapter, you are expected to analyze the impact of ICT and computers to education. Rules of ICT in education. Most of the people, especially students and teachers, use technology in making things. These technologies are known today as information and communication technologies. Most of us can really relate in this, right? Since pandemic happened, all of the attractions goes online with the use of social media platforms and applications. Based from the definition of United Nations Development Program or UNDP, ICTs are basically information handling tools, a varied set of goods, application, and services that are used to produce, store, process, distribute, and exchange information. Meaning, it's further enhanced the quality of education in using ICT to improve student learning and teaching methods. It can serve multiple teaching functions. ICT can be used as drill and practice to help solve problems, to access information in different fields. It can be used in different teaching and learning modes. These learning modes include classroom interactive learning, independent learning, network learning, organizational learning, and managed learning. Information can be delivered in an instant because of the internet, you can deliver information in a wide coverage at low cost. ICT created an enormous growth over the past years in the field of education. It has changed many aspects in the teaching and learning process as it affects the educational system, educational learning environment, teaching methods and strategies, and the way the student learn. It helps in improving one's teaching ability as well as being a means to higher level of innovation. It aids the classroom effectiveness. It also promotes professional and educational development as well as helping teacher trainees with their active learning. Let us find out how the development of ICT had made a great impact in education. In 1650, the Horn Book. This is a wooden paddle with printed lessons that were used during the colonial era. You can find on the paper alphabets and a religious verse which children would copy to help them learn how to write. A wooden frame mounted on a sheet of white paper was protected by clear horn-plated sheets of plastic. The frame have a handle and resembled a table tennis paddle. The very first papers were made of vellum. These days, they are made of paper. 1820, Difference Engine. Charles Babbage was the one who designed this computing machine which was used in calculating and printing of simple math tables. The difference engine's name is derived from the Latin method of calculating differences between two numbers. A difference engine is a type of mechanical calculator which is built to perform polynomial computations. It is uses the small sets of coefficients to tabulate polynomial functions. Analytical engine Charles Babbage designed the second computing machine which was used in calculating complicated problems by following a set of instructions. Analytical engine is a computer where every aspect of the computation has been controlled by mechanical and digital devices. Punch cards are being used to program any calculation set. Integrated memory, flow control are all included. This device is the first general mechanical computer that is able to perform any of the other definite calculations. 
1870, Magic Lantern. This is a primitive version of a slide projector that protected images printed on glass plate C. Magic Lanterns provided affordable education to the working class. People all over the world have long since been entertained by Magic Lanterns shows, which utilize lantern slides of popular stories, temperance tales, and ghosts to put on live performances. 1890, the school slate was invented in chalkboard. The chalkboard is one of the biggest inventions in terms of educational technology, which is still being used up to this age. School chalkboards and slates boards were created in 1890. These were employed by students to work on their problems and their seats, allowing them to erase their works whenever they needed to. Hi guys, I'm your next reporter. So, in for the year 19, 1990, the pencil. Pencil is usually found in the classroom, in the office, and even at home. Then, in the year 1905, the stereoscope. This is a three-dimensional viewing tool used as a source of entertainment at home and in school that were meant to be used to illustrate points made during lectures. So, next is in 1920, the radio. The radio was used for on-air classes which began popping up for any stu students within listening range. And for 1925, the film projector. It is also called the movie projector, which is used for projecting moving, moving image from film. So, next is in the year 1930. Overhead projector. The OHP was initially used by the U.S. military for training purposes in World War II, but later on quickly spread to schools and other organizations. And in the year 1936, the first computer. This was the first freely com programmable computer. Next is the 1940, the ballpoint pen. This is a useful tool in the classroom. And the uh, minimograph. Minimograph machine made copies that can be distributed. And for 1947, the transistor. The transistor was invented by Bill Telepon Telephone Company, the which company one of the vital components of the computer. Mm. Mm. For in the year 1950, the headphones. Headphones are used in the schools for some listening skills and to do individual listening for audio files and like that. The next is the slide rule. The slide rule which was developed by William Audrey and others. Before the advent of the pocket calculator, it was the most commonly commonly used calculating calculation tool in the science and engineering. Next is the in the year 1951, the video tapes. Video tapes were used as an ex exciting methods of instruction. And in the year 1953, the IBM or the International Business Machines came out with their first computer machine. And for 1957, the reading accelerator. The reading accelerator was a simple device designed to help students read more efficient. And for Skinner teaching machine, P and F Skinner, a behavioral scientist, developed a series of devices such as the teaching machine that allowed the student to proceed at his or her own pace through a regimented program of instruction. And for 1958, educational television. Using this, there were more, more than 50 channels of TV which included educational programming that aired across the country. And for 1959, photocopier. So the serographic office photocopying was introduced by Xerox. 
And in the year 1963, the Computer Assisted Instruction or the CAI. And the Stanford University introduced the Computer Assisted Instruction in the Mathematics and Reading. They offering individualized learning and allowing students to take self-paced active role in drill and practice. And for mass, this this point printing device which is still being used today was invented by Douglas Engelbart. In the year 1980, Plato Computer Plato was one of the most used early computers. And in 1981, the IBM introduced its first personal computer. And for 1985, the CD-ROM drive. The CD-ROM is a storage medium that could store text, media, and audio. For the year, the same year, in 1985 to 87, the era of educational computer games. Example of this are the My Best Beacon that can teach how to type fast. And for Carmen San, San Diego that involves learning in geography and number of mantras that aim about enhancing the mathematical skills. For the 1990, the World Wide Web, Tim Berners League gave life to the WWW which that is, which is an interconnection of hyperlink documents. And for TI-81 calculator, this calculator grabs up, up to four math functions at once developed by Texas Instruments. And in the year 1990, 1991, the laptop, the first laptop is the PowerBook. And for 1993, Personal Digital Assistant PDAS, these were released by Apple Computer Ingram, and they were used for computing, storing information, and even keeping schedules. And for the year 1996, the mini computers, the Nokia introduced a phone that had internet capabilities this started a revolution of devices that were small portable computers. And for 1998, the first ebook reader was released. In 1999, the interactive whiteboard. The interactive whiteboard is an instructional tool that allows computer image to be displayed on the whiteboard, which can later on be manipulated by teachers and students. And in the year 2010, the Apple iPad was released. In the year 2015, the interactive mobile apps have become the, the center of the effective classroom learning. So, for next report. So, hello guys. Ako po yung next reporter. So, let's proceed po tayo. Rules and Functions of Computer Computers are an important component of ICT. We don't go a day without using our computers. We use computers at work and at home in many situations. Computers have altered many areas of our life, including in education. Both teachers and students believe that computers simplify and complicate their lives. We can deal with papers and other things more easily, but we must constantly learn and adapt to the new trends that computers provide. Despite their complexity, computers do really help kids and instructors learn. Since the early advent of computers, the way pupils study and instructor teach has changed. In a fundamental level, Computers operate through these four functions, input, output, and processing and storage. Input, the transfer of information into the system, e.g. and through a keyboard. The rules of computers in educations is 
They offer a robust storage of data and reliable data retrieval. The computer technology, though, is the process of learning. Use of computers in, in the classroom can help students, teachers, to teach much more than they can do without them. Many researchers have enumerated the rules and functions of computers. Among them are the following. So these are the following. Number one. Computers can increase productivity. Computers make it possible for students and instructors to accomplish the job effectively. The benefits for students include being able to easily conduct a research and generate assignments. Checking and grading are the most simple for instructors who are planning a lessons. They may utilize the time they save for other subjects. As we progress every day, Computer and education can be beneficial in several ways. It can increase the productivity of a student in making their own assignments. We can't deny that the fact that a computer has made our life easier than it before. It facilitates speedy access to information and faster communication. Especially nowadays, and ha we have a pandemic in our situations so computers is very helpful in several ways this is one of the several ways that i am talking about how does technologies increase student productivity well it interacts with students and teachers and gives them the personal touch creating interest which is missing, missing in the traditional ways of learning. In the process of making the teachers, the teachers work easier. Involving students can boost the productivity and creativity of a teachers and the learners. So let's proceed to the number two guys. Computers facilitate, facilitate communication between students, teachers, and administrators. To be able to communicate to kids, instructors, and administrators, and parents, there are various communication options nowadays. Like, we could use our phone or use a laptop, computers. S several several of these technology may be used to submit assignments, distribute as, as a digital lessons. And participate in online discussion. So, so ang ginapag-usapan tayo guys kaya mo na nang pag ah karam pag online class, especially we are using a tools, a software like Gmeet, Zoom, and especially the Ramon LMS and etc. So number three. Computers are used to access large amount of information. Today, learning is not restricted to following a set of predefined textbooks. When students seek information, it is usually located on the internet, where there is a lot of it. Ang gina ang gina min ani guys kay like for example Google, you can search. Any information that could help in our in our example, we have assignment. We could research about it. We have activity, or we do have a um, task that it needed a guide. So, wait, um, so let's proceed for the number four. Computers are brilliant aids in teaching. Computers are used to support different types of learning using various academic applications, productivity tools, and software presentations. Software may be used to bring lectures to life, allowing teachers to interact and 
engage their students. Additionally, teachers may utilize various software support tools to provide content and data generation services. Well, to tell you guys, the computers plays an important role in teaching in the learning process. The computer can be used in teaching learning of a play form, drawing the children. Computers used in school, it has and will have a great role in the presentation of the lessons and for the communication and information. How, how does computers help educators or teachers? Computers have revolutionized the teaching professions in multiple ways. Teachers use computers to re record grades, calculate average, and manage attendance, and also access a data on a student performance in online programs and assessment. Computers have also made it easier for teachers to vary their instructional delivery. Number Number 5. Computers postulate an electronic format for storage of information. On the other hand, the computer does keep everything we need in mind. Storage device may be used to store files, which can then be accessed, saved, and reused. What does it, what does it mean when information is stored in electronic format? Electronic format means text based on a bait of or image based content. In a form that is produced on a pub on published by and readable on computers or other dig digital devices. And is an electronic version of a printed book, whether or not any printed equivalent exists. So what is a electronic storage system? Electronic storage is a set of administrative and IT classes which allows allows a documents to be stored on digital media, ensuring the legal validity and enforceability toward third parties, third parties. Especially when we delete a files or documents. Computers have a recycle or a recycle bin that we can retrieve from it. So, naano siya sa mga every laptop or computers. And nowadays, napo na siya aron sa mga cell phones. Number six. <clears throat> computers can teach subjects and enhance learning of the students. The use of computers will enable the the students to learn about many topics. Students may do assignments, workouts, and techniques or on their own in order to help improve their abilities. These computers allows allows to a student to learn by doing rather than trying to absorb lines of information. From a textbook, they are also give the opportunity to learn by trial and error, which allows them to see how things work rather than forcing them to trust what the teacher says. Well, do computers improve learning? Well, yes. Computers are beneficial in so many aspects of learning that this result is not surprising. Having access to computers in the classroom allows students to learn not only about relevant course and research material, but to learn about computers themselves, instead of penmanship, students practice typing skills, especially right, especially right now. When we graduate, we are looking for a job, and labinag, labinag kaila, or example, office job ang yung kailangan. Siyempre kailangan yung mag-knowledge about computers, about, about what our computers are for, so napod na tayo. So, ginamaster na ito akong typing, akong skills, and how to handle uh, computers. So, this so aring, aring typing, guys, it helps and exercise or practice ourselves 
to in the future. So, so more to guys. So that's that. This is that is our last report. So thank you for your listening, and thank you for thank you, sir. And God bless you all.